Here I'm going to show you three tricks for working with slicers and pivot tables in Excel. And depending on what you're actually trying to do, these will either be tricks or tips or pitfalls. Now make sure to download the file for this tutorial so you can follow along. The link for it will be in the description of this video. And make sure to subscribe, like the video, and click the bell icon to receive notifications of new videos. The more of you that subscribe, the more of these free tutorials I can make. Now let's start off with the raw data and turn it into a table. You don't have to turn it into a table to make it a pivot table, but it makes life a little bit easier. So click in your raw data set and then go to insert, table, or hit control T. Check my table as headers, okay. And now let us create our pivot table. I'm actually gonna make sure these guys are white so it's a little bit easier to read. It's an annoying little pet peeve of mine. All right, there we go. Now click in the table and go to insert, pivot table and let's go for existing worksheet and bring this guy onto the helper sheet how about B3 and let's create a very simple one with manufacturer and how about category underneath each manufacturer and let us add total for the values and now we have a nice little pivot table and then go to pivot table analyze and insert a slicer how about for the manufacturer now the slicer doesn't have to be for a field that is on the pivot table but this will make it a little bit easier to see what's going on and everything seems good right now but let's say that now we want to add a new pivot table i'm going to collapse these fields just to make it fit on here a little bit easier and put this guy right here and let's click in our first pivot table, hit Control A to select everything, then Control C to copy it, and now Control V to paste it. And we now have a new pivot table. And since we added the slicer to the first one before we copy pasted this, this is now linked to both pivot tables. So if I only want to see the Cyberdyne manufacturer, click it in the slicer, and it applies to both pivot tables. And that is a great tip for if you want to add many slicers onto one pivot table and maybe even a timeline as well and then add five or six additional pivot tables and have the slicers linked to all of the additional pivot tables and once you have the new pivot tables you can still click in them and then go over here and change them however you would like to change them so they do not all have to be the same so this is a tip if you want to control multiple pivot tables from a slicer or many slicers apply to many pivot tables but it is a pitfall if you did not know that this would happen and you spent a lot of time getting one pivot table right and then you made some slicers for it and maybe you took the slicers and put them on another worksheet so you forgot that they were connected or you just weren't paying attention or you just didn't know and then you copy pasted this pivot table to save yourself some time when creating the new one not realizing that that new one would then be linked to all the other slicers yes yeah, slicers are confusing and it's going to get a little bit more confusing very soon but first, let me show you the manual way to get a slicer to apply to multiple pivot tables. So let us delete this guy. And let's say that I want my slicer now here for the pivot table. Then go to pivot table, analyze, insert slicer, and let's do it on manufacturer again. There we go. And let us clear the filter. And it only applies to this pivot table. How to apply it to the other pivot table? right click the slicer and go to report connections and this window is going to show you a list of all the pivot tables that you have and the worksheet that it's on and this is also why it's very nice to name your pivot table something useful not just the default pivot table one pivot table two and so on so to link this to the other pivot table just put a little check right here hit ok and there we go now let's go for the second tip or pitfall. Copying pivot tables is nice. It can save you a lot of time, even though here I didn't add a lot of formatting. So you may think, okay, what if I add a bunch of slicers to a pivot table? Then why don't I just copy all those and paste them so I don't have to remake them? Well, maybe that's a good idea, maybe not. Let's see what happens if we copy this guy and paste him right here. What has happened is we have made two slicers that are 100% completely linked and connected. So if I want to change Cyberdyne here, it changes Cyberdyne over here, and it changes both pivot tables. How about Acme over here? All right. How about I clear it over here? So they will mirror each other.
Now that can be really helpful if you want to have multiple slicers spread throughout the workbook, but have it still control the same data set. But once again, the problem with this, and it usually happens like this, you create your pivot tables and your slicers, and then you select them, you hit control X to cut them, and then you paste them on another worksheet. So your pivot tables and your slicers are no longer in the same location. And then you have pivot tables throughout the workbook and slicers throughout the workbook, and you change one slicer here without noticing that the other slicer has also been changed. And now you may think, hey, all I have to do is right-click this guy, go back to Report Connections, and I see that both pivot tables are checked. Let me just uncheck Pivot Table 2 so it's not connected to this guy anymore. Well, what do we have here? Look at these little guys over here. And it says, the following filter controls will all be disconnected from this pivot table. Manufacturer and Manufacturer 1. What does that mean? Well, let's find out. Hit OK. And let's change this guy to Tyrell Corp. All right. Wait a second. This one has now updated. This one has changed. This one has not changed. What happened? Well, remember I said that these slicers are now linked. They mirror each other. So if we right click this, go to Report Connections, we are going to see that Pivot Table 2 has also been unselected for this one. So how do we make it so that these two are no longer linked? The easy way, don't copy paste. Just don't do that. And if you want to verify that these guys are linked, they are connected to the exact same slicer cache. And the slicer cache is the guy behind the scenes that does all the filtering. You can right click go to Slicer Settings, it's currently off the screen, and we get to this window, and look here to Name to Use in Formulas, Slicer underscore MFR. That is the name of the slicer cache that was created for these slicers in order to control the pivot tables. So this one is Slicer underscore MFR, close it, and let's go to the other one, Slicer Settings, Slicer underscore MFR. They are connected to the same thing in the back end, the thing that we cannot see, the slicer cache. So, my recommendation. You are allowed to copy pivot tables. It can be quite helpful, especially if you have a lot of slicers and you want them to control all the pivot tables, or you want to save time with formatting. But do not ever copy-paste slicers unless you want them to permanently mirror each other. Now let us click this guy, get it out of there, and let's reconnect this guy to both of them. All right, and how about we clear the filter and move on to the third tip, which is kind of an interesting one that doesn't come up as much unless you are importing, exporting, and clearing data quite a lot. And then you start to notice that there are entries in your slicer that are not in your workbook, and you don't understand what's going on. I don't know why this is a default setting, but let me show you what I mean. Let's go to the raw table, and let's go up here, and how about we want to remove Cyberdyne. So I'm going to select all the Cyberdyne results, click in here, hit Control A to select them all, right click, go to Delete, Entire Sheet Row. We have to do that since the data is filtered right now. And all I'm doing are deleting these rows from the table. That's all. Nothing special. Then I'm going to go down here and clear the filter again. So all we have now is Acme and Tyrell Corp. So no Terminators anymore. And let's go to the helper table. Now it's not going to update by default because remember for pivot tables, they rely on a pivot cache. The pivot cache allows for all of this amazing consolidation and analysis and in a very speedy way. So what we have to do is just to update the data, we can, I'm actually just going to refresh everything. So data, refresh all, and notice our pivot tables no longer have Cyberdyne. However, the slicer has Cyberdyne. It is grayed out here at the bottom, and I can even click it, and it will just make it so my pivot tables have nothing to show. That's kind of confusing, especially if you wanted to completely remove a piece of data or an item from your workbook and you don't want it to be represented anymore. So we right click the slicer and go back to slicer settings, it's currently off the screen. And here we are. Down here in the bottom right are the options that you're most often going to change, at least the ones I most often change. And the one that we care about here is show items deleted from the data source. 
Uncheck that. Hit OK. No more Cyberdyne. And those are my three tricks for working with slicers in Excel. I hope you found it helpful and make sure to subscribe and like the video and click the little bell icon to get notifications for all my new exciting tutorials. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.